There are many different types of lettering techniques we can use with patchwork cutters. First of all, I'm going to demonstrate using patchwork cutter for embossing. In the lettering sets, most of them, like I demonstrated in the introduction, are break apart, which means you would just take the letter, and this would just be broken out of the, the piece. So you just would take this, so the UDOs obviously take the whole alphabet out and just keep this in a bag. Some of the lettering cutters, for example, the classic alphabet, which I use a lot in my classes, this has the lower and upper case, but these are not break apart. You can see they're all joined together. So I'll actually show how I use this in a moment. But, uh, and then some of the um, inscriptions and lettering sets, for example, this is like from the holiday set, the season's greetings. This would only be used as an embosser but most of them can be used as embossers or as cutters. So when we are using, for example, these are the single letters, you could use this to emboss onto a cake. So like if you were going to do, for example, like the name Anne, I'm doing this upside down so you can see this in camera, but you could of course just emboss this into the fondant and this would give you the inscription. When you're doing things like the Season's Greetings here. You then will just take that and just press this into the fondant. You can also, um, actually with this type of uh, inscription, you can actually put some um, like airbrush color onto here or you can use a sponge pad with some gel color. So you could actually put like, for example, red or green onto there on a gel pad, like almost like rubber stamping, and then emboss that onto the fondant. So then that would give you the, the design. So when you take this off, this would actually give you this in a different color to, for example, a white cake with red lettering on. When we do, for example, things like cookies, I will often use these type of letters or the larger ones for monograms. So for example, you can see how I've made here some like sweetheart cookies. But what I actually did there is I rolled out some, a seafoam colored rolled fondant and a yellow rolled fondant. I then used these type of letters to do inscriptions for sweet, for messages and then I painted them with some pink gel color mixed with some vodka and a brush which is just painted in there and it runs into the design and I then cut this out with a heart cutter attached to a cookie with some piping gel or Cairo syrup so this gives really nice designs for cookies so for a wedding you could do like monograms for uh, wedding cookies we also use the cutters as, um, as regular cutters and uh, so as I showed you, this is the classic alphabet. So this comes with the uppercase and the lowercase, and also the ampersand here as well. Uh, you'll notice on, especially on the lowercase here, that there actually are two, like two, um, a, two A's and two E's and two S's. So if you were doing two Y's, so if you're doing like, for example, happy birthday, this is gonna cut out the Y for the birthday and the Y for the happy at the same time. So this is actually one of a few of the patchwork cutters that we don't actually break apart. So the idea behind this is you would actually cut out a whole alphabet and then you would use the relevant letters you need. So you would take your gum paste and your gum paste would then go on to your, to your board like this. So you put actually a square of gum paste. So what I've done is I have put my gum paste through. Remember all of the lettering would be number five thickness. Remember. 90% of what I cut out is number five. It's just things that are freestanding like I showed earlier in the DVD. Then you actually would take the whole of the alphabet here and you then would then just press this on nice and firmly. Now you can if you were just doing like for example happy birthday you could just roll a strip and then you could just put the H and the B over the relevant areas. But the idea behind this is that you would cut out the whole alphabet at one time. These type of letters, of course, you can also use the individual ones as well. So you see how this will cut out the whole alphabet. Then you would take a, when we're using the, for example, the letters, you would take out, if you were doing like an A and a B, you would take out the inside part of the letter. And then you can just actually just almost like peel these off. You don't have to use the knife tool here, you can just peel these off and you see how this will then cut out the letters. These have a really nice sort of block style to them and I use these a lot. Uh, the classic alphabet is actually the one I use in most of my classes like on the flower fairy cake. And you can see how this will cut out for a baby shower cake, little building blocks. I mean, many, many times you can use this. 
So whereas if you're using these individual ones, you just obviously make a strip and you would cut these out individually. So that is the difference between the classic alphabet and some of the other lettering cutters. In the patchwork cutter designs, there are also um, other, for example, things that are popular, like this Old English star, which is nice for a graduation cake or a holiday cake. Um, and there are different style fonts for obviously different types of occasions. The other one I use a lot of, um, especially for example for cupcakes, for cookies, um, is the set here which is going to have the large number and key set. And this has the alphabet and then also, and these are large cap um, alpha numbers and uh, letters. And uh, this is actually, as I said, the, the numbers here and the letters. And uh, so this is the letter set. And um, this has a key with it. Um, a lot of times students ask me why does it have a key and that is because these are manufactured in England and in England when you turn age of either 18 or 21 you are typically given a key to uh, your house where your parents live and so a lot of times people um, use a small gold or silver key on 18th or 21st birthday cake so that's why the key is in that particular set. Um, we get several emails about that particular question. But if you are using the, the letters here, I'm going to take the, so I'm going to show you how I would do a monogram. So if, for example, you were going to be cutting out a monogram for a wedding cake. So a monogram can be, for example, a last name. It can also, on a, for example, graduation cake could be your first name and last name. It could be two initials on an anniversary cake or an engagement cake. So monograms can be of many different types of combinations. But when we do a monogram, we're going to put some vegetable shortening down. Now also, the monogram can be done with two different colors. So for example, you could do black and white, or you could do both the same. So for example, my monogram of my name is an N and an L. So I would just press this on, just firmly. So this will be the N, and then this will be the L. So you can see how I've cut out the two initials. And again, usually I would just scrape away with my knife here. Because of the vegetable shortening, you can see how then the design has been left on your board. Now the nice thing about this particular set is we do have the option of being able actually to um, create like a jigsaw puzzle. When we do monograms, I'm just going to take these off of the main board here. When we do monograms, and again I'm doing this upside down to, to camera, but you know when we do a monogram sometimes we entwine the letters like this. So as you can see here obviously this could be placed right beside this or it could be put in position like this on a cookie. But you also have the option with these particular patchwork cutters. So for example if I wanted to position this um, L shape so it actually looked like it was sort of part of the end so they were entwined I could actually take my L cutter and then I could then actually cut out with the L cutter a recess for the so you see how I've actually cut out a recess and that would mean that then when you pull away this excess paste here and you position the L the L will actually go to create almost like a perfect jigsaw puzzle so you can see on top of a like a graduation cake, this would give a much more sort of polished, um, more professional look to the letter. So you can see here, this actually means that your letters have been sort of like connected into each other. So we've cut out almost like a jigsaw puzzle technique. And I also use this method sometimes for floral themes, which I will be showing you a little later on in the DVD. So those are some of the lettering techniques. So whether you decide to use individual letters, like this type of letter, this type of letter, or you decide to use the uh, various sets that come together like this, the classic alphabet, uh, the Patchwork Cutter collection has a huge variety of lettering styles to suit your every needs. In the Patchwork Cutter designs, some of the particular designs that are offered in the collection are of a more delicate design. Like for example here, the Celtic design. As you can see, it has a lot of intricate lines and small details. The triple clef from the dancing couple that I showed earlier in the DVD. 
the shoe from the um, Parsons shoe set. The swirls, typically because of the shape of them, although it's not a really complex design, but it's just as easy to do in this, what I refer to as pie crust method. And also when I teach the snowflakes in my holiday class, the medium snowflake is more basic, but the large snowflake and the small snowflake are more intricate design. So I would use the pie crust method for those. When I do the pie crust method, I refer to this because it's almost like sometimes how we lay a pie crust over the top of a pie plate. And uh, when I do smaller things in classes, like for example, when I do snowflakes, I just use a small little round of styrofoam. If I was doing something larger, like the Celtic design, I would just use a block of styrofoam. Usually I wrap the styrofoam in some ceram rack or press and seal, so that this obviously just stops you getting the dust from the styrofoam into your gum paste. So for example, if I was doing something basic like this swirl, what I would then do is just gonna press that into the styrofoam block. So what this does, this actually makes an indentation take a little bit of vegetable shortening over the top. And as it says in my you know, introduction, like I refer to like a pie crust, I lay this over the top like a pie crust. Generally, I use a medium pin. This is a medium size uh, pin I'd use to make flowers with and just run over the top. Then I would then just pull away the excess paste here. So what this will do, this will leave the design in here. And then uh, usually I just remove this and then just flick this out with a straight pin and this would give me then my swirls. So this is actually a little bit easier than trying to cut it out in a conventional method and then pulling away the excess paste because if you're trying to get into this area with your knife tool you're probably going to damage that inside area. So though this is a more basic design this is usually the way I would use this particular this is from the hearts and swirls set. Moving on to other designs for example like the triple clef we have here. This again can just go, and once you've made initially a slit in your new block of styrofoam, that will sit in there nice and neatly, but just rub a little tiny bit of vegetable shortening. Now don't, for example, put vegetable shortening like this on your finger, because what will happen if you were to rub this on the cutter, it would actually fill up the cutter with vegetable shortening and then the actual gum paste would stick into there. Now the triple clef, as you can see, has obviously fine detail here. So again, to try and remove those pieces with your knife tool. So this is why I do this in a different method. So I'm gonna lay my paste onto the top. This is black gum paste, and I rolled this through the pasta machine on number five. All of these things would be done number five. Again, I'm gonna run over the top of this with my, you can see with my um, medium pin. I will pull away the excess paste. And then what I actually do here is I take out the inside part here with a straight pin while it's in the actual styrofoam block. You can do this obviously by removing it or by doing this. You can see how you just take away the, the straight pin here. So you can see how then I've got my paste is in here. And then all I'm do is just flick this out with a pin and this will just come out with a straight pin here. And I'm just gonna just gently remove that and you can see here that you're gonna have then a perfect triple clef. If I was doing something like the Celtic design, which I've already done here, again, it's much, much easier because to try and cut this out in a conventional method like I've shown in the earlier parts of the DVD, and then to take your knife and scrape away all this paste to gain access in this area. So it's so much easier to have this in the cutter and then literally just like I've shown you on the triple clef, you can just pull away the pieces that we want to remove. So this is, that is what I refer to as the pie crust method. With a snowflake, um, you would take the design. On something that's a little bit more complex like this, I'll sometimes put the vegetable shortening on this before I put it into the cutter. So you have the option of doing this before or afterwards, but just a little bit of vegetable shortening over the top. Here I have some white gum paste. Now your gum paste doesn't want to be sticky, so if it does feel a little sticky, you can put a little touch of cornstarch onto it. But you lay this over the top. And again, we're going to go over the top. So you see, you're using this pie crust method. And I usually, when I do in the snowflake, I roll from the middle to the outside. So you can see what I've actually done is expose the black, the black design of the cutter. Just gently pull this away so your design should stay in the cutter here. You have to roll fairly firmly so you make sure that you get all of this detail out. And then with a straight pin, you will just take away the designs here like this and see I'm taking away this little 
inside part here. And this is going to be what we're going to be removing. So it's going to just continue with this. This is a beautiful snowflake, but if you try to do this in a conventional method, it would be very probably frustrating and you'd end up spending a long time trying to pull away all of these little pieces. Plus also because it is extremely delicate, when you try and take away all of the small areas with your knife, you're probably going to pull away your excess paste. Whereas this method, as you can see, I've now cleaned off all of the design here. I will then take this out. So you can see I've basically taken all my detail out. And when I take the snowflake out, what I normally do is just sort of flick this with my pin. So you can see how it's just going to really almost a release because we have a little bit of crisp going on to there. And then you're just going to take this, once you flick this out, just going to remove the snowflake. And there you'll see you have your beautiful holiday snowflake. Uh, these are the snowflakes I used on the cake with the penguin and the polar bears and also on my holiday cake I teach my rolled form of the holiday class here in Atlanta and on the road. So that is how you would do the snowflake. But this could also be used as a really attractive embosser. You can emboss this into the fondant, pipe over the top of it, or you could just emboss this onto the top of a cookie. So that is what we refer to as the pie crust method. So this would be used for any of the finer detailed cutters as an alternative to the regular traditional method of using patchwork. Moving on to some basic flowers and leaves. Patchwork cutters have a lot of floral themed designs and this is, for example, the fantasy part of the fantasy flower set. Fantasy flower set has many different designs which we can use for cut out little simple flowers. These are wonderful for decorating cupcakes, cookies, petty fours, the side of a wedding cake, uh, just when you want something very quick and simple. Now generally when I'm using, um, just cutting out very simple flowers, I use a desired color of gum paste here. I have white. And uh, what I would normally do is, if I'm going to be cutting out multiple flowers, especially that I want to be pearlized, once I've rolled the gum paste out number five, I will just put it onto a napkin and I use the super pearl dust or the white sparkle dust and I'll go over the surface with the pearl dust. So that means that the flower is then going to be already pearlized. So this makes it much easier when you're cutting out multiple flowers. So for example, then you would take your desired amount. And of course you can do this on a larger scale. I will point out though, when you're working with gum paste, which we're working with here, you, know, you don't want to be working with two huger amounts because it will dry. Again, the cutting edge, you're going to just take a little bit of vegetable shortening. Now, because we're putting vegetable shortening on these cutters, you wouldn't pack them away like this. You generally just wash them in some, just a little bit of warm soapy water, let them dry properly, and then pack them away. Because if you leave the shortening on there, it can actually discolor and uh, dry on the end. So you're just going to press the cutter on firmly, so you see how this just cuts out a basic flower. And then, for example, if you were going to cut out some little uh, flowers like I have here on the cupcake I showed you earlier in the DVD. These little flowers are just cut out. So this means you could um, cut out multiple little flowers like this. So you could just obviously cut out as many of these as you need. When you're doing small flowers like this, generally I just pop them out with my finger. So you see how these flowers then are already pearlized, so rather than dusting them afterwards. And the pearl dust doesn't affect the gum paste in any way, so you can just re-knead this in. When you're doing the um, flowers, like for example the larger flower like this, you just will pull from the, with the point of the metal knife tool, and just pull that away. So this will leave your daisy type flower onto your uh, board. Once we get to that stage, we will then take the flower. Now, for example, when we're doing small flowers like the little flowers here I have on the cupcakes, all I did there is I took these and I placed them onto a cosmetic sponge. And then, once I got them onto the cosmetic sponge, like this, you can just cup these. You can just use like the rounded end of a bowling tool or you can even use the rounded end of the knife tool here and then you can take a little, this is some piping gel in a bag, just put a little spot of piping gel in the middle. And then in the case of the particular cupcake I have here, I use some black uh, dragees and I'm using some beading tweezers. 
and I would then just put a little black pearl in the middle of each of the flowers. And um, these look very attractive. Now this could be done directly onto the cupcake. So you could actually just, when you're ready to put the flowers on, you could actually just put a little dot of piping gel onto where you want the flower to go, lift the flower up with the tweezers, position it onto the cupcake, and then you can actually then cup it while it's on the cupcake, a little dot of piping gel, and then put the little pearl in place. Or you could have these pre-made and then you can just let these dry and then these can be taken and then just stuck on top of the cupcake or petty four when you're ready to uh, decorate them. So these could be made in advance or can be, as I said, stored like this. But also you could put a little dot of royal icing in the middle of there. You could put um, other non pearls or white pearls on black ones. So there's many, many options we have. When we're doing a basic flower like this, um, often I dry these on, um, this is crepe foam, which is just like a bubble foam. So what we can do there is because this is already pearlized, you can just position this onto the, and see this will then dry the flower in a nice natural shape. And then we can take some yellow gum paste. This is a silicone daisy center mold. You can just push some uh, gum paste into a silicone mold. So take this out, so this will give you a daisy center. And again, just a little bit of piping gel which is going to the middle. I usually use piping gel just to secure that and then the little daisy center can go into there. But these of course could be made in all sorts of color combinations. Um, these are then dried a little while and then you could use this to decorate the top of a cupcake or you could use this on top of a simple buttercream cake or rolled fondant cake to make a little flower. Um, so this makes a very attractive little flower as a decoration, very, very quick. Um, in the fantasy flowers, there are also traditional daisy shapes. There are different sizes of blossoms here, so you can use these in different sizes. On this cupcake here, this is actually done with the smallest size blossom um, in the set. And this one was actually done with a little silicone rabbit mold. And uh, here I have the little small flowers done in hot pink. And then I once have attached them with some piping gel, I put a dot of white royal icing in the middle of the hot pink flower. Um, so this would be a very cute little spring Easter sort of cupcake. So these, particularly the fantasy flower set, which is a new set, is very, very attractive. Um, as I showed in the, um, when I was talking about embossing, here I've used this as an embosser on the fondant, but here you can see it's the same cutter actually used as a cutter and then yellow center painted in there. So you could actually just put one flower and some leaves on as an additional little more of a dimensional design on your cupcake. The other um, way of using the flowers is to um, to use, for example, sometimes when I do flowers like the hydrangeas or some of the other flowers, this is the small hydrangea from the spring set. What I'll sometimes do there is I'll um, dust these prior to, like I used the super pearl, but I'm actually gonna dust these in a sort of hydrangea color. So here I've rolled out some paste. So what I will first of all do is I will just emboss one of the hydrangeas just on the top so I know basically the size of the design. Then I will take my board with my Crisco on, put a little bit of Crisco down. And then I'm going to take some, here, some periwinkle blue dusting powder. And with some periwinkle blue dusting powder, now usually I would do this over the whole the whole um, whole of this area, but I'm going to just brush some some blue into a circle. So you just would dust these into little circles like this. So you're going to make these about the sort of size of the of the embossed. You just would do this over the surface here. You'll notice like this little small. That's just because I had a little bit of probably vegetable shortening on my finger. And then we will go in with some purple. Of course, hydrangeas come in many colors, so you can, this is called royal purple. So then I will go around the outside of this with a sort of a purple. But it's just this technique of either dusting them before you um, cut them out with the super pearl, or like I'm showing you here, where I'm using the dusting powder. And you just will pat this with some paper towel. And then we can then cut out, so then you would just press the hydrangea cutter, so the hydrangea cutter can then be pressed onto the top. So you see, when you then cut out the little hydrangeas, when we remove these, 
and we take these, this is going to give you a hydrangea which is already going to be dusted. So again, on the pedifor or cupcake or on a wedding cake design, on the side you can make these little hydrangeas. Sometimes when I'm cutting out flowers, basic flowers or more dimensional flowers, I use two different colors of gum paste. This can be a very attractive way to incorporate two colors, for example, for a graduation cake or for a wedding, and especially classic colors like black and white. You could take black gum paste and white gum paste. You can do this with a larger quantity, but I'm going to just roll the paste out a little bit freehand. I'll put the two pieces of paste together. Then I would then roll this out just a little bit more with my rolling pin. So when you feed this through the pasta machine, this means that your leaf or your flower that you cut out is actually going to have a two-tone color. So I'll just go through the pasta machine on number five. So then I can take my paste here, put a little bit of vegetable shortening down, and press this on, and so for example, Again, I can take some pearl dust onto the white. And of course, in this flower that I'm showing you the same blossom, you could do this with the white up or the white down. So press this on the top. And then we pull away your excess paste here. This is a technique I use when I do drapes and bows and ribbon loops because you can actually make then a two-tone version of a bow or a drape. and. Um, you can also just, uh, as I said, just remove this small piece of paste. And then this would go on to a, if you want to make this a little bit more detailed, you could do this very basic, but you could also put this on to a, um, here I'm going on to the coated side of the cell pad. And then you could use the black gem tool. This is sort of like what we call a silk veining tool. So I'm just gonna go over the surface of each of these petals. So this is really just taking it to the next um, step. So it just makes this flower, this basic flower I've just shown you just a little bit more decorative. And then we will turn over the cell pad to the soft side. And then with the Dresden tool, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just blend from the outside to the inside, fairly firmly. So if you see what this does, this is going to give you this almost like slightly pointed effect on the edge of the petals. And then again, this could then be dried into a former. So you could just dry this into a former like this. And we could also put another center into the middle here. These centers can be pre-made and actually dried. And so your yellow center could go into the middle here like this. So this was actually um, here a photograph of a uh, dessert that I did in New York recently and uh, so these are small pistachio dessert and uh, these were the flowers that were used for the 300 desserts that I had to create but uh, this is uh, using the gum paste obviously in just a little bit of a different way but you can see the two-tone effect on the flowers is very very attractive and but as I said in a classic black and white combination that is also a very um, good way to incorporate those two colors. In some of my classes, like in the uh, summer wedding cake class that I teach, I do a sort of decoupage applique effect on the cake, which uses the hydrangeas I've just shown, and also the roses, and you'll see this cake at the end of the DVD when I in, go into some of the detail of some of the pieces that I have. And um, so when we do that in the class, we roll out some pink gum paste or color of choice, and then we take a this is a uh, rose garland, so we then would emboss this. Now normally when we do this on the wedding cake, we make a strip, so we then would cut out six of these because we have six of these roses. So I'm just gonna press the rose onto there, mainly around the edge because we don't want this to cut out like a jigsaw puzzle. We want to emboss it and just to cut around the edge. And then we remove the, but remember when I was showing you how to do the um, the monogram I was explaining, I would show you how to also inset, for example, leaves into a rose as well. So you can take, or into a flower. So this could go on to um, a cake, but then if you wanted to, for example, have um, a leaf going on to here, so if you wanted to add, for example, some leaves with this, what you could actually do is then you would take your, your green gum paste. So this is some green gum paste I have here. 
interesting color with some moss green. So then I will take my, my leaf and then I would then cut out the leaf here. Now these leaves, these rose leaves, I use a lot for example if I was doing cupcakes because you can do these, there's lots of different, and particularly this little tiny one, this is wonderful for example for little petty fours. This is from the wild, these are all from the wild rose set which was actually the first flower that I showed you in the DVD when I showed cutting out the two methods. But uh, these are all these leaves are used. Uh, when you're using the um, this one here, normally I just remove the stem, but you can leave the stem on. And again, you can just take these leaves and pop them out. Now, when I use these, for example, for petty fours, you could just dry these flat. You could dry them on some um, crepe foam. You could dry them on some aluminum foil. Sometimes, especially these small ones, I generally just leave flat. This is also a nice way to add an accent on a little uh, marzipan fruit. If you were doing like a marzipan apple or orange, you could actually take a um, one of these, let them dry, then you could actually push these into the top of the little marzipan fruit. You can also put these on the cell pad if you were doing a buttercream cake with buttercream roses. You could actually just go along and just soften the edge with a large cell stick. And again, just dry this on some crepe foam or onto a um, piece of aluminum foil. So this will give your leaf a natural shape. These look much finer than doing pipe leaves, which typically look a little heavy. When I'm doing these, for example, for um, if I was going to do like a jigsaw technique, what I would then do is I would then take the cutter. So for example, you take then the actual rose cutter. I just cut this rose out with. And then I would position this on top of the cutter, just like I, how I did the monogram. So I position this on the top, and then I would then cut with this. So this means then when I would insert that into the, you see how then it goes together perfectly like a jigsaw puzzle. So you could do the same technique with, for example, a leaf here and a leaf here. So on the summer wedding cake that you'll see, this is how I did the design, the garland on the side of the cake by actually sticking the roses on first and then we did the cut out leaves that were actually cut out so that then again you have a much neater effect it looks like a jigsaw puzzle not just laid on top of each other because if you put the leaves on first and then the rose on top it's going to look a little untidy and uh, also not level so this jigsaw puzzle method of cutting out is a really good way when you want to insert things to give the illusion of a leaf going behind a flower Other basic leaves can be done. This is, the, for example, the two leaves from the fantasy set. So this could be used, for example, for daisies. Again, if you were doing cut out daisies, you could cut these out. And then also this one um, is the one that I used for the leaves on some of the cupcakes and things that I've shown. So again, these can be cut out. And these could be uh, dusted. You could do these in two-tone color. You could do them in... Um, Again, two-tone paste, so you can actually do these in two shades of green gum paste through the pasta machine, so your leaf would be darker on one side and lighter on the other. So on the cupcake here, uh, the leaves here on the cupcake, when I attached, I put a little bit of piping gel, I just put the leaves on with some piping gel, and a little bit of piping gel, and put the flower on. And of course, I've embossed the fondant with the same from the Fantasy Flower Set here, you can see, to give a nice design, so you almost get the... Um, design on the fondant and then you have the design in a larger scale on the top of the cupcake. So this just shows you some um, basic leaves and basic flowers using patchwork cutters but there are many many designs available. There are for example calla lilies, there are roses, there are uh, various spring flowers, daffodils um, and things like that. So there are some that we show.